Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. I'm coming live to you today early uh, with a fun craft that I'm going to make two of because later this afternoon uh, I'll be giving those away. So, um, what we're going to be making is just a fun little sign that involves this. It's one of those Dollar Tree Crafter Square um, canvases. It's not not dimensional. It's not stretched like this one. This one we're going to use also is from Target. We're going to use a little butterfly shape, a palette knife, some um, little paper clips or these little dowel things. We're going to be using Mod Podge. We're going to be using these two colors of Waverly uh, Matte Finish No Prep Acrylic Paint from Walmart. This one's called Pool. And this, the black is called ink. Um, did I say Mod Podge? Um, a little bit of speckle, some chalk paste, and this stencil, which doesn't look, does it look familiar? I just made this t-shirt like a few days ago um, and made a purple one too. And we're going to use the words peace and love from this stencil. What else? Oh, and a napkin. And an iron. So this is not a hard project at all. There's just a lot of steps. So a lot of it I've done. I've been working on it last night and this morning. So we can just kind of march right through. Um, as you are hopping on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle. At the end, if you want the supply list with everything and where it's from, just let me know and I'll be glad to get that for you. Okay, so... First thing I did, and I'll show you all the bits, was I applied a generous coat of Mod Podge to this little, what is this, 7 by 7 stretch canvas that was like $1.70 at Target. And then I let that dry. And this is what that looks like. Can you see how it's, even though that's a matte Mod Podge, it does kind of get, and I did the sides too. I let that fully dry overnight, but you can just let it dry for a couple hours. And then I painted this in the blue, and we're gonna do it. And then I used the spackle knife to put some black around the edges. And I separated the three plies of this napkin so it would be all ready to go. So let's start with the Mod Podge part first and we're going to be using an iron which makes it really fun okay so i have my iron all heated up and ready to go yeah what am i doing i'm not ironing it on this I'm ironing it on this okay and i need a piece uh, parchment paper because I'm dirty because I don't want to get the Mod Podge on my iron. Good morning everyone. Yes, this is super early for me because I have a really busy day today and I want to come live again later. Okay, so when you use an iron on a surface that has dried Mod Podge on it, the heat of the iron basically um, reactivates the Mod Podge. So I'm just going to lay my napkin on top, put a piece of parchment paper here, I think I need a different one because this is the one that I was using to make my candles. And it has wax on it. And in case you don't know what I'm talking about, yesterday I did a video with the same awesome napkin where I just used no Mod Podge, just an iron and a napkin. This is a wax battery operated candle. So, and that project got a little bit of wax on that piece of parchment paper. So, so I have my iron set just a little bit below cotton 
And see, it's already, it is already sticking. So you're just going to kind of gently go over it. Last year, or maybe it was the year before, we made the cutest little napkin rings out of some of these Dollar Tree shapes, but they were for fall. And we did the same thing with dried Mod Podge and an iron. Okay, and then I'm going to do the sides. A little bit hard to hold on to. See how that's working? amazing and I would do all four sides trim the excess off and I have one that I have done when it was fully dry I added one more thin coat of Mod Podge on the top and that um, that's just to protect it and it kind of gives it a nice sheen and you can see how I just cut the excess off the back so let me put the iron, turn the iron off and put it aside because we don't need it anymore for this project. And we'll march on to the next step. My shirt is so adorable, isn't it, you guys? I mean, if I don't say so myself, I made two. One said uh, made to worship, um, and it was purple. And I stenciled the inside of the sleeves and then rolled it up. And then I made this one that says, um, Peace, Love, Jesus. And I stenciled the outside of my t-shirt sleeves and just rolled them up. These t-shirts, this one and the purple one, came from Hobby Lobby. And um, they are nice. They're nice cotton. Um, and they, Hobby Lobby always has their t-shirts on sale. So... Okay, so then, this is all ready to go, basically. Um, let's work on our background. This is going to go behind this piece right here. So it'll look like this. It just gives it some dimension. And when I was first playing around with this project, it looked kind of plain to me. So I decided to use my palette knife from Dollar Tree that obviously I love. Look how cruddy that looks. And use the palette knife on this piece and a couple other things. So I'm just going to get some black. It's called ink. Paint out and put it on my paper plate here. Then I'm just dipping my palette knife in it. You hold it like this. And you're just going to run it along the edge. And see what that does. The um, the bumps on the canvas grab the paint off your palette knife in different amounts, and that's what I think creates such a nice effect. So I just did one coat of this blue pool colored paint on my canvases. And I painted the back also because I knew I was going to be giving these away. And I wanted them to look nice. <laughs> so let's see what I need to add a little bit. Here, I have one that is all ready to go, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just attach, and I painted the back of this one too, so it would look nice. We're just going to attach our canvas in the center if possible. Just with some hot 
glue. I'm using my low temperature hot gluing device. Um, you could also use some E6000, but today I'm not going to. I'm just going to do it like this. Ooh. Ooh. Get my fingers in there. This is the benefit of using one of these low temperature hot gluing devices versus a high temperature one. Um, you can see I have it on my fingers and it startled me a little bit because it is hot, but I'm not burned. <laughs> I don't need a band-aid and I won't have a wound. So here is the next step. I kind of thought about doing the um, black around the edges of this canvas, but I opted not to. Okay, then the next thing I did, which I've done this in advance, so you all don't have to sit around and wait. This, these are some little shapes of butterflies that came from Dollar Tree. And I used a little bit of this Dollar, Dollar Tree lightweight spackling compound just to fill that hole. And then I painted them. One coat of that blue pool color. And we're going to do the edges on this also. This is one of those craft projects that I really don't know how it just it just start I just started playing and because I wanted to play with the new napkins that I just bought at Painted Tree on Sunday and um, I need some more paint and um, I was looking for blue color and then I thought about butterflies you know this is one of those kind of distracted thinking type of projects. But I think it's going to be lovely, and it would look super cute in a little um, photo easel, uh, just sitting on your desk or the counter or, you know, a cabinet. Okay. So here is my butterfly. And that edging will stand out more once I attach it. So let me just put a little bit more on that. Okay, here he is. So I'm going to let this dry. And let me get a wipe so I don't get this black paint on anything else that I'm working on. Yes, you can find tons of IHR napkins on Amazon. And oh my goodness, that company has the most beautiful designs. Wow. Okay. So, this is, this is like an arabesque shape that I painted, and I will do the black edging on this as well, but I'll do it off camera, because this is going to go on the second one. And um, here's my plan for the butterfly, and then we'll move on to the next step. This is the one that I did yesterday, so it's all ready to go. I was thinking that I wanted my butterfly to stand out even a little more. And so I could have painted this center part black. But instead, what I did was I grabbed some of these little teeny tiny little spindle things that I used. This is a larger one, but I used these a, a while ago in some projects. I ordered it on Amazon, and I'll be glad to get you guys the links if you want. It's painted in ink. If you don't want to do that, you can also use a small um, clip. And you're just going to take the metal hardware off and put a little bead of glue. Put the 
pieces back together like this and paint them, which I've done right here. And it makes a great little butterfly body too. So I'll use one of these little things on one of them, and I'm going to use this on the other. And we'll just glue this. Oh, my word, I have more paint on myself. Um, we'll glue this on. Um, this one, and I'll put the spindle, or the, yeah, spindle, the miniature spindle on the other one. Linda says this is super cute. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I said earlier, I mentioned that I'm going to give this away, and I'm making two. So I'll give two away, and I'll include some of the new napkins that I just got. Um, and I'll tell you this afternoon with pictures what what you would need to do to get your name in for that. You could, um, you know, decorate those wings more if you wanted. But I think that looks pretty cute, other than this darn blue string that's just hanging on. Okay, so let's add that. Well, we're going to add this to our project, but we need to make the top piece. Um, and I wanted to be able to. Uh, hang on. My little. This little come out as well. I wanted to be able to stencil a word on the center. This is just a wood piece that I painted and I used my palette knife. I couldn't find another piece like this in my gigantic stash of wood. I can't believe it. So I pulled this out, which is kind of an arabesque shape, and it will work for the second one just fine. So I painted this, and I did the edging on it. But what I want to tell you guys, before you stencil any kind of wood that you're going to stencil on, wood has a tendency to grab the medium, the chalk paste, and suck it down in its pores and then kind of spread it out and you end up with a really, well, you can end up with a fuzzy look. It depends on the quality of the wood. And the wood from uh, Double Tree is not usually that great. So after I painted and edged this and let it fully dry, this morning I just took it outside and I gave it a quick spray of this Rust-Oleum Accents two times ultra cover matte clear sealer spray from Walmart. Um, and that generally will make your projects, your wood projects look crisper. Too much junk. Okay, so I'm gonna write peace on this first. No, I'm gonna do love on this one and peace on the bigger one. So this is a, a beautiful stencil that I used the other day, and I've used it on other projects to do, to do this Peace, Love, Jesus. And I used white ink for my t-shirt. With ink, it's washable. All you ever do is, um, all you do is after it's dry, you use a, an iron with a piece of parchment paper on cotton, no steam, and you go over it for three or four minutes, same thing with the sleeves. I used a stencil called, um, I don't remember the name of it, but I'll put it in the comments. Um, filigree leaf is what it's called. And I did ink on this from magnoliadiy.com. Heat set it, and then it's completely washable. So this stuff that I used here is ink, but what we're gonna use for this chalk, for this piece of wood is chalk paste. It looks like this. Um, anyways, the chalk paste, ooh, this could work great. The chalk paste and the, I just want to make sure if I have it centered. The chalk paste and the ink and the stencil are all from magnoliadiy.com and I'll be glad to get you a link. Okay, I am just going to do the word love. So, I put my stencil down, pressed it on. I've used this so many times, you guys, that I didn't fuzz it. 
which is something if your stencil's pretty new, I recommend that you do. You can fuss it on another t-shirt, a pair of jeans, um, you can fuss it on the magnolia uh, tacky towel, anything that's going to be low lint. And that just keeps your stencil from getting stretched out. Oh, I love it. Love. Isn't that perfect? Okay, so let me throw this in my tub of water. And I will just let it sit in there until I can run into the kitchen to spray it off. Let me think, is there anything else we need to do? I think we just need to assemble. And these are the two pieces that I have so far. I'm gonna do this butterfly, and then I'm gonna put the word love up in this corner. Um, what do you guys think about that? It's kind of busy with the napkin on this little stretch canvas. So I don't think I necessarily want to add a bunch more of anything. I want to just keep the design simple since the napkin is kind of busy. Look at my fingers. How is that happening? The only thing I might come back and add are some little antennae on my butterfly. But what do you guys think? Isn't that just a cute little project? Okay, what do I have in it? Um, this piece, this right here was $1.25 at Dollar Tree. This was $1.70 or $1.75 at Target. Um, these little butterflies came in a package of 10 or something for $1.25 at Dollar Tree. I used one use of a stencil. I used a little bit of Mod Podge. I used one napkin, um, some, a little bit of paint. I bet you I don't even have $3 into this or maybe $3.25 or $3.50. And I just think it's pretty darn adorable. So what do you guys think? And this shows you how you can take just part of a stencil design and use it. So if I wanted to just do the cross on something, I could do that. If I just wanted to do the heart with a dove, or just the piece, symbol, or any of the words, or the whole thing, or just the images, or just the words, um, the stencils from Magnolia DIY are super duper versatile. How do I keep from getting a line not stenciled on the sleeves of your shirt? That's a good question. And let me just tell you, it's not perfect. So here's what my entire sleeve looks like. I stenciled the front and then I stenciled the back. And they don't match exactly, but it does not matter. Also on this sleeve, I was a little heavy with my ink right there. Not so much on the back, but it doesn't matter. I don't think you would notice that. You could wear this t-shirt with the sleeves down or rolled up with a cuff. Um, and if you want to link, if you want to watch this video, um, say video. <laughs> if you want the supply list, and I'll list everything for this, say supplies. Um, yeah, and I'll just answer you in the comments and, and get it all super easy laid out for you and then this afternoon I will come back and finish this finish the I don't know where the canvas with the napkin went but I'll get everything all finished up on the second one I'll get pictures and I will let you guys know um, how I'm gonna give them away so it's not gonna be there's no purchase required for this one it's just gonna be and I'll include some napkins with it too um, okay, so tell you guys tell me this. Cindy just mentioned she likes my shirt better with the cuff rolled up. I think I do too because it's more comfortable. But what do you think? These these big cotton t-shirts can look 
can make you look just like a big marshmallow sometimes <gasps> because they're so straight. And um, that's why I kind of like to roll the cuffs up, but tell me what you think. Oh, thank you, Barb. She says this is really cute and she also loves my tea. All right, well, I hope that this was a fun um, little video to watch. Uh, this was our finished project. Easy peasy peasy peasy. And um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'm seeing a lot of people saying cuff rolled up. I see a few people that say cuff down. Oh, Candy says I always have style. Thank you. Look how cute it looks with my little white jean skirt. If I don't say so myself. Oh, okay. Good question. Beverly's asking me on the ordering site, what are the backing slips for? Well, basically what they are is this. And when you cut your stencils up into smaller pieces, sometimes people want to put them all back on one backing sheet. This is, you know, what my peace, love, and Jesus came off of. Or maybe you've lost a backing sheet for a stencil. So they're just for that. That's, this is what they are. Okie dokie. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you have a blessed and wonderful day. I'm hoping this afternoon to come back live again and start some projects with that beautiful bedspread that I bought at Goodwill this week. And for everyone who's saying supplies or video for the t-shirt, um, I'm going to go get a cup of coffee, sit down in my comfy chair, and I will get all that info out to you right away. If you're watching on replay, you can ask for the supplies there too, because I keep coming back to my videos for at least a week, week and a half, and I'll be glad to get you the supply list and the video where I showed how to make this t-shirt. Oh, or if you want the video where I showed how to use an iron to decoupage a napkin on a battery operated wax candle. Let me know that too and I'd be glad to grab that. Okay, see you guys later. Thanks for watching.